This is a Sony CCD TRV 310. There it is. DCR TRV 310 video camera. This is from the late 90s. Still works excellently. Not good because I got to transfer some tapes here. And you'll notice DCR, I started to say CCD. That's because CCD, as you know, that's the name of the chip inside cameras. But that is what Sony used to use as the prefix for their video cameras. However, this one is DCR because this was a new phase. You see it says digital 8, and maybe you've never even heard of that format. The 8 millimeter tapes, which are about the size of a really fat cassette tape, um, that's what this uses. And digital 8 was a stopgap format, I didn't know it at the time, a stopgap format between 8 millimeter tape, not film, that was long gone by the early 80s, but 8 millimeter tape and DV tape. So when this came out in the late 90s, this had some amazing features like a 360 digital zoom. That was mind blowing to people. And it would play back standard 8 and Super 8 tapes which would hold about two to four hours, or it would record on one of those tapes. They said to use Super 8, but I would use regular 8 too. It would record on one of those tapes for one hour, digitally. And the picture and sound and everything, you see it's even got S-Video uh, input-output. These can be used for inputs or outputs, it senses. Uh, the picture was great. It was just as good as DV, and I know this because as soon as I got this, DV tape I already knew about, but DV tape seemed exotic and expensive. And the cameras, even though they were a lot smaller, they were much more expensive, as you can imagine. Well, pretty soon after I got this, and I started using this in a professional, semi-professional setting, um, I had access to DV tape. And they looked about the same, and I f felt silly having bought this. But it played back our old 8 and Super 8 tapes, which we actually had about less than a dozen. Um, but it made excellent tapes on its own. The one-hour record time was a little annoying, but... It was. Uh, it still looked and sounded great. You could plug in a mic. It says plug-in power, and I can't remember if it does have phantom power or if it's telling you, no, you need to plug it in with power. I don't know. But I use this thing endlessly to shoot segments for cable TV and to archive stuff and home videos, obviously. Uh, for some reason, I got a Panasonic strap for it. I think this was free in the free bin at Best Buy when I worked there. And that's where I got, well, I didn't get this one. That's where I got my original. TRV 310 and we used it and it was great and then my parents went on vacation in Vancouver for their 25th anniversary and some ass stole their camera out of their trunk. Now my dad's big into photography or you know we all are taking photos, family photos so what was in that bag was our camera and like four rolls of film all gone never to be seen again some jerk face stole it in Canada and I'm never going back and now Vancouver's got a big heroin problem so Sounds like I got the better end of that deal. But this, if you can see this, SEMA, by the way, this I bought at Best Buy, lens protector, very inexpensive and very useful. Unfortunately, the way this lens is with the threads, I don't think that modern video cameras have any provision for that, including the one I'm shooting on now. I should probably check when I'm done. Anyhow, this camera, after their camera was stolen, we got insurance money, and since we had so many tapes already, I went on eBay and found another one. And I bought this, and it's worked great. Uh, when this one arrived, though, it was still in the portable case, oddly enough. You know, the, the cloth carry case. Not, not a Sony one. One that you would buy, you know, from a company like SEMA Aftermarket. And it was still in that with the instruction manual, a couple batteries, and four or five tapes of some family vacation of something. I'm guessing it was someone foreign because there wasn't a lot of talking. And, you know, they were just sort of shooting scenery and that sort of thing. So I have to wonder, somebody stole our camera in Vancouver, then I bought this one on eBay and didn't realize, could this one have been stolen from somebody else? That's karma. That'd be, that's weird. I wonder what happened to ours. Maybe if I'd looked hard enough, I'd have found ours on eBay, but probably not with the rolls of film. So this, it also had a very nice, and it's off now, I should have plugged it in, but you'll get the idea. A very nice screen, nice and big, um, and the color was phenomenal in that, and you could still look through the viewfinder, I believe, when this was open, if memory serves. Or maybe not. Maybe that was my DV camera. But this was color, which was mind-blowing to me at the time. Uh, the batteries had a nice long life. And now this thing, the batteries, I think still take a charge OK. I can't remember last time I checked. A few of them didn't, and I got rid of them. But overall, this was a pretty good camera. And now I just hold on to it so I can dub things out to DVD or whatnot. And another nice thing is that this had a digital in and out. Firewire. So this was just like a DV camera. It had a shoe, 
which was nice. Um, it was just like a DV camera, but it took a different tape, and it did all the things I needed it to do. And then when I got a DV camera, this sort of became my archival one. I just figured bigger tapes, more robust. And so a lot of things, finished products that I did in Final Cut, I would dump to this because I didn't have a DVD recorder at the time. And uh, that's, that's the story of the TRV 310.